This is another episode of Cart Rides with Mike. I'm here with Mark Hooker, the director of agronomy at the Royal Auckland and Grange Golf Club in New Zealand. Thank you, Mike. It's a pleasure having you here. Shall we go out and have a look at some of the interesting grasses and maintenance practices on the course? Let's do it. All right. So you wanted to ask about greenkeepers. Yeah, greenkeeping in New Zealand. Yeah. And you've been here at Royal Auckland and Grange for how many years? Uh, this is my 10th year. And uh, when you got your start in greenkeeping in New Zealand, you were yeah, so I down south? I started on a course in Hawke's Bay called uh, Bridge Park. Uh, when I was about 16. Um, we had, at that time there, there was five greenkeepers, including the superintendent. I think uh, there's over 400 golf courses in New Zealand, and if you average out all of the golf courses and also all of the uh, greenkeeping staff on the courses, I think it works out to about 1.5 greenkeepers per course, which is pretty low. Uh, and you think about courses uh, overseas um, that I've been involved with, uh, Dubai and Bahrain I think we had 40 staff there on those courses. Um, the great thing about greenkeeping in New Zealand for me is that everyone's very multi-skilled uh, and there's a lot of job variety so um, often courses you know the superintendent's also the head mechanic he's also the head plumber and the head electrician and so they do a, a range of tasks on on the property and I think that's the great thing about the industry in New Zealand. Um, and it really uh, is exciting for people coming into the industry. We're really trying to promote greenkeeping in New Zealand at the moment because young people to, these days are very IT focused um, and they've kind of forgotten about the trades out there. Um, and I think, but there are still young people out there if they're aware of what we have to offer as an industry, they'd actually be quite excited about it. One of the things that we, we've been trying to get our heads around with, with our course is, is how to produce high quality uh, fine fescue in our rough. And what we've found is that if we can manage the fine fescue um, at a good standard, uh, then we actually uh, can keep it dense and prevent pyranua from colonising inside. So if you have a look at this area over here, for example, where it doesn't quite get the irrigation coverage that the likes of this area here does. Um, through our summer months, um, the fine fescue thins out, and then straight away, when the canopy thins out, you provide an opportunity for power to establish in the autumn. So that's what we've got here. So now we'll have to come through um, this spring and selectively remove the uh, power annua and then drill seed fine fescue in. And then ultimately, we have to figure out. Uh, why the fine fescue isn't performing in this area and f and for this particular area it's irrigation coverage so then we need to look at another sprinkler head in this area. How many maintenance staff work here? Yeah right now we have 20 including myself and that includes two mechanics as well and a horticulturist. For 27 holes? Yes. And a lot of uh, work in the bunkers it looks like to me. Look at they're beautiful but yeah. how many bunkers on this nine? On this nine, we have over 50 bunkers. Uh, so uh, on the other two nines, I think they have uh, 31 and 30 bunkers on each nine. So um, yeah, it takes a lot to maintain these bunkers in terms of playability. Um, and sometimes you feel like you're not really uh, you're not really getting it. Um, you know, the, a lot of the time members aren't happy with the playability of bunkers. I don't think you'll ever win that battle based on. You know, maybe where a bunk is situated on the course with shade or irrigation coverage or, you know, how the sand dries. So I'm really trying hard to work out an objective assessment on uh, performance testing bunkers. Um, but I think one of the biggest things that we've learned since opening uh, the course is that we're certainly understanding that there are a number of bunkers on the course that get a lot more play. Uh, and so once you sort of figure that out, you can put a little, more, a little bit more attention into those bunkers than maybe what you, do, what you would do to other bunkers because it gets a bit unrealistic to try and maintain on this nine, you know, 50 bunkers every day. Uh, I'd rather our resources were getting put into fine turf management rather than a hazard management, even though members want them perfect, yeah. Pure distinction? Yep, uh, we have Pure Distinction Greens uh, and Tees uh, on our new property. Um, 
we did a research trial for about five years on the old property with different bent grasses and when I say bent grasses I mean colonial bent grasses or what we call brown top in New Zealand and also creeping bent grasses because we wanted to find out which bent really worked well in our, in our environmental conditions here at, at uh, Auckland. Um, so we ended up coming down or shortlisting it to a couple of different creeping bents and Pure Distinction was the one that stood out in the end. When was this green planted? This green was planted approximately two years ago now, so it's about two years old and was brought into play in February of this year, so it's been in play for about six months. Current mowing height? Uh, all of our bent grass greens are at 3.5 millimetres. Forgive me, I don't know what that is in inches. Um, so we operate in metric in New Zealand obviously. So yeah, all our greens are about 3.5. Uh, we think that's a good height for what we need in terms of playability. We sort of target about 10.5 to 11.5 feet in terms of speed uh, and we ma manipulate that speed mainly through rolling. <laughs> wow, pure distinction on the tees. I don't know if I've seen this before. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's been, an, I think, a good success for us. One thing I have noticed with this bent grass is that once it's established, uh, it creates a very dense canopy. Uh, and so what we've been able to achieve uh, over the last four years uh, basically is uh, we've been able to keep pyroannua out and I think a lot of that is because of the growth characteristics of the pure distinction. What are you mowing it at? Uh, this, this is getting mowed at 7 mil at the moment um, and we don't really alternate with that. We hand mow our, our tees uh, primarily uh, and in the and through the week we do that with our greens as well. The great thing about that is that our staff can walk the surfaces and if they see power they stop and pull it out. So we hand, hand uh, weeding on new surfaces is our primary way of keeping power annual out uh, of our surfaces. When we did the redevelopment, uh, after our architect had created the new routing on the course, uh, we realised that a number of cypress trees were going to get killed or cut down. Uh, so we harvested the wood, uh, we had a guy come on site who had a portable mill uh, and we milled all the timber and then uh, our talented staff uh, actually created all of our coarse furniture using the cypress timber. So our tea markers, our hazard posts, um, behind you there is a, a hole plinth, um, all of the hole plinths, everything on the course was made from the timber that we cut down. Frost delays. Yeah. Yes uh, or no? Yes. Different, <laughs> different <laughs> from other people in the country, uh, I suppose. But um, yeah, a hundred percent. We want to protect the turf. Um, you know, I always talk about uh, preventing power uh, from our old, from our course. I'm not saying power is a bad grass, turf grass, because I used to manage power anywhere in our greens. But on this property. We have creeping bent greens um, and we don't want power coming into the bent grass greens uh, and so I don't want to damage the turf for example with a, with a frost. Um, so any, op any opportunity we have to protect the turf in a situation we will 100% support that idea. Yeah I, think, yeah I think everybody I talked with so far they generally do frost delays. Yeah. So I suppose there's some places that don't but yeah. you're not too far out of the ordinary. We don't have many frosts in Auckland actually what's been interesting this uh, winter for us is that we've done a few fog delays. <laughs> so we've had some really heavy fogs in the last couple of weeks where you can't see 30 metres in front of you so we've actually delayed play with our membership because it's been a health and safety issue. Um, how much sand do you put on the greens? Uh, yeah, good question. So we actively sand dust our greens. Uh, we put about 130 cubic meters of sand per hectare per year on our green surfaces. Um, so Nine millimeters uh, yeah. for those who like to do depth. Yeah. Uh, so that's approximately, um, I budget for around 30 applications of sand, somewhere around that per year. Um, so. Generally, it's linked around growth of our of our bent grass. I don't do clipping yields, something that I'll start thinking about doing. 
um, but it's more about what we're visually seeing on the course uh, in terms of you know what's in our uh, clipping boxes and and also how the how the turf's um, really performing. Um, so for that, uh, I do quite a lot of performance testing, uh, objective assessments in terms of speed, firmness, and ball smoothness or roll smoothness. Um, I do that every month uh, with an assessment on the greens. Do you do any trapping for rabbits or other animals? Do you have them out here? Yeah, uh, we have um, we have an active trapping program with uh, a lot of our membership. So we have uh, member volunteers who are involved with. Uh, rat, uh, possum, and mustelid trapping. Um, we also have a rabbit population, which we've been battling for a few years. Um, most of the rabbits, and you can see a little bit of scraping here. Um, we, we've actually got got on to the populations really well. We mainly do that through um, evening shooting, really, with silencers. Yes, so uh, at uh, .22 rifles with silencers. So we'll. Uh, we'll call up the police and let them know that we're going to do a, uh, a shoot uh, and then basically go out do that and then we call them up and, and finish the session. And these are non-native animals that, yeah. that do a lot of damage to some of the Yeah, um, so rabbits, and, rabbits were uh, brought into New Zealand for much like possums uh, uh, many, many years ago by the settlers for pelts uh, for an industry. Um, but what happened in New Zealand was that they ended up taking off um, uh, the possums, for example, and rats. They they uh, decimate our uh, native bird life populations, uh, and rabbits um, have a, have a massive impact, particularly on farmland areas for grazing. And the golf courses, obviously, we're talking about them digging out uh, bunkers and and obviously on a on a piece of rough like this. So uh, so yeah, we try and c control them. Uh, through shooting. Now this is something crazy. Uh, it's the middle of winter. You've got Bermuda grass that's on a north-facing slope that's growing too well and it got scalped and it took me a while to process where I am in the world to realize that a north-facing slope would be the warmest yeah. spot. Yeah, so so here, yeah, so here at Royal Auckland and Grange we have uh, Bermuda grass fairways or what New Zealanders call cooch grass. Um, so typically through the winter months um, our fairways will go sort of a semi dormant. They don't go fully dormant so we, we tend to be able to put maybe one or two pigment applications out which keep them looking green. But we certainly, certainly don't have to mow the fairways as frequently as we do through the spring and summer and autumn. So we haven't really mowed fairways for three months and this is sort of how they look through the winter and then by the time we get into sort of September we'll start getting a, a lot more growth uh, and we'll start our mowing regime on them but yeah this fairway in particular is quite interesting because of the north slope on it it does get a lot of good sunlight so it tends to have a lot more growth um, and uh, you can see we've got a little bit of a scalpy issue um, because of that on this on this fairway here. How many times in a year would the fairway, would the Bermuda grass fairways get mown at this course? Uh, well so through spring, summer and autumn we typically mow the fairways twice a week um, and then as we get into, uh, typically in Auckland we'll have our first sort of frost, if we have a frost, around the first week of June um, and so by late May we've pretty much stopped mowing our fairways. Um, and we don't really mow them again until, like I say, September. And then it goes to t once a week and then twice a week. Yeah, it builds up pretty quickly. Uh, and then by the time we get to sort of January, um, hopefully this year we'll start regulating them for the first time because these are new fairways, obviously, and we haven't, we've still been encouraging a lot of lateral uh, growth and establishment, so we haven't had an opportunity to start regulating growth, but hopefully this summer we'll do that for the first time. Well, thank you so much for joining me on Cart Rides with Micah. It's been great to see you, Mark, and to have a look at this fascinating course. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's been so great to have you over to New Zealand, and um, we hope you have a really safe journey home, and we hope that you come back again and bring other turfies from around the world to see our wonderful country. Okay, I hope to do that. Thanks so much. Yeah.